All right, we're getting started on our fire pit. I've wanted to do this sign for my back patio for a long time. Um, this is a welcome to our fire pit um, little kind of snarky sign. Um, and what I'm going to do, because it's going to be outside and it's probably going to get all of that humidity and moisture and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to start out with cork sealer, which was designed by DecoArt to seal duck decoys, which are made out of cork so that they float. So this is super duper sealer, and I'm going to make sure that I get all of my edges back in front to make sure that I have a weather impenetrable um, surface. And I have saved a piece. I thought I saved a piece. Let me see if I can find it. This is a piece of sealer that I had poured on my palette. And if you notice, like I can't break it by folding it and that kind of stuff. This is what you are doing. This, this material is designed to actually penetrate your surface, which allows it to bond to this surface. And then it's like a mega plastic coating. So then when you put your paint on top of this, the paint is actually um, made to bond with this material. So they're chemically bonding. And then when you put your varnish on top, it is actually um, bonding and going through those layers to hold that together. So what you're creating is a little plastic chemical sandwich that is biting onto your wood surface. So it's really, really important that you use um, your sealer step, your paint step, and then your um, final varnish step. So make sure you don't neglect to do the sealing. Um, that's going to make your projects last for a long time. So I'll just dip my brush in there and then just do a nice, um, doesn't have to be a heavy coat, just a nice thin coat. And I'm going to make sure to do all my edges. And you might want to get out um, a varnish sponge or something like that to do your edges. That'll make it in, um, work in a snap. All right, we're going to go ahead and base coat with burnt umber. And we might have to do two. What I'm really interested in is having a brown color behind the crackle that I'm going to do um, that will be under the black. So we want a, just a nice warm brown. You could substitute another color if you wanted to. Um, and if this doesn't cover really well, I'll go ahead and do a, a second coat. All right, now we're going to do the weathered wood, which is this product from DecoArt. This is an amazing um, crackle medium. It is a chemical-based crackle medium. So it will um, crackle a year from now, two years from now, if you put it on there and dry it and whatever. So I don't want it everywhere. So I'm just going to kind of hit and miss, and I'm going to make sure I spread it real thin. So I'm kind of really pushing on my brush. It has a tendency to want to draw back up. So if you don't get it spread out, and you can go back and re-spread it. You also don't want to make islands, like these are all kind of setting si um, alone. Like let's make bridges from island to island, and that way it just kind of connects, but is random. The top coat's the one that you don't want to overstroke and, and do some of that stuff with. So we're going to apply our black. We've got a big, nice puddle of it over here. I don't think it's going to be enough. I'm going to scoop it up and apply it thickly, laying our brush down. And just smooth as you go. Try not to go back in and stroke. Once you're in there and you've laid it down, get out of there. Because as soon as you touch it, it'll lift and create a big hole. All right, and just work systematically down the board and don't overstroke. All right, I'm going to let this dry, but you can see I have a lot of good crackle. It's got a nice, rich undertone. And then as soon as this, uh, actually not dry, but cools, I went ahead and I was um, heat drying it. Um, as soon as it cools off completely, and this middle area really looks still kind of thick, and that's going to stay tender. And since that's where most of my art is going to go, um, right there, I don't want to sand too much right there in the middle, so I'm going to be careful of that. But I do want some distressed around my edges <clears throat> and up through things. So that's where I will focus my sanding efforts. And I just use the heaviest grit sandpaper that I can. And it's going to peel some of the stuff off and it's going to, you know, um, scratch it and all that kind of thing. And that's exactly the look I'm going for. All right, the very first thing we want to get done is our fire because that's going to set kind of the tone. I'm going to use a um, crescent brush, which is like... Um, cut like a filbert, but then it's also cut and shaved this way and has very stiff bristles. Okay, so then we're going to go in and fill in. Actually, you know what? Instead of rubbing that off, I'm going to go ahead and just base coat. And I'll probably need two coats because Deep Burgundy does not like um, 
to base coat very well. All right. Okay, I'm gonna stencil the details. I'm gonna go ahead and just get most of it stenciled. And if I wanna change a color, I can do that. I'm gonna use bleach sand. And I always pat off over here on my paper towel. And that way I don't get bleeding under. If you do that, you will have a nice clean stencil and just do a couple thin coats. It takes a little bit longer, but you don't have to repair anything. And that's brilliant. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that. Okay, so I'm not sure what colors I'm gonna do the pieces that I have left, but here's what I am gonna do. I'm gonna wipe off all of the paint off of my brush as much as I can get off of there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use just my stencil to create my line art so I don't have to trace. And then I can base and do things, or I can put the stencil back over, either way is fine. But it gives me my holding places so I can see but it doesn't like base coat them. So I think that's gonna be a good thing. It'll let me just imagine where, where things go. Especially when we go um, up here, I think I'm gonna to wanna to paint that banner in. And so I'll need to actually base coat that. So that's going to give me all my lines that I need. Okay, I think that will do it. Okay. okay, so I want to create a little crackling fire going on here. So we've got the deep burgundy. The next color in our sequence is going to be burnt orange. I'm going to wipe that off. And then we want to go ahead and give this this kind of movie, kind of groovy attitude. Okay, so we'll just kind of drag it and do some dry brushing. And when we get down in here, we'll just make our flames just kind of curly and crazy. And then we'll go into um, Canyon Orange. And we'll do a little bit of the same thing, but we're trying to build the color towards the middle. And get a little brighter. Then we'll pick up marigold. And get some flame and marigold going. starting to look like fire at all. It's looking pretty good. All right, then without wiping off too much at all, I'm gonna kind of bring in some curls of color. And then we'll go into primary yellow. And that's gonna be our strongest color. And we're gonna just streak.
look. Looks like we have a little flame going on. And a couple of stronger. Keep it curling. Okay. Okay, I've decided I'm going to do the toasted and the marshmallows in desert sand as a base. Got a couple more things I want to do to my fire, but I'll wait until I take this stencil off. All right, I'm going to take a brush. I'm cool. I've got some filthy water. Um, and I'm going to float at the base of my fire with deep burgundy. It's just going to perk all those reds up a little bit more. So we're going to float around some of the edges to reestablish. I want to do a little bit of smoke coming out of my fire, so I'm going to use some slate gray. Rub it off over here on the paper towel. And let's make it meander this way and kind of wrap itself around. So we'll just bring our little smoke on through the lettering. And then we'll increase some of its um, strength and color. I'm going to take some of the uh, Media Fluid Acrylics in the Burnt Sienna. These are awesome because they are transparent and they don't cover up paint, so they look really, I don't know, really striking. We're going to make our toasted marshmallow, so um, let's go ahead and give it... I'm probably going to want to have a goldener color. I think I can do this and then do that. So then we want to go around Give it that kind of toasted, all over wonderful look. Okay, then we want to go ahead and give base of our letters. I'm going to float next to the edge and then we'll walk it up after. So we'll walk that up the letter. And we'll have little toasted letters.
Getting a little toasted looking. All right, then we're gonna go into our leech sand and we're going to highlight our marshmallows. And so we'll go to the top there, under here, this bottom corner. And we'll do a little dry rubbing in the middle as well. And we can give the top, and we're gonna have to be careful with this, we can give this top a little bit of highlight as well. Lock it down, turning my brush on its chisel and then flat to walk. Okay, that just gives it a nice dimensional look. Press the top and then flat marches down. black. All right, so we'll have our neutral gray come along and give us just a little bit of that stone kind of look and dress those up. All right, we'll take a little bit of the slate gray and we'll just round out those little corners and give it a little highlight. along the edge. Don't want it too liney liney. So we'll just kind of let it let the brush tell the story. Okay, that gives us some dimension. I think that's good. Give it a little bit of dry brushed effect high and lows. Okay, so we'll take soft black and we'll go ahead and shade the edges of our banner. And we'll shade under too, but I think I'm going to have to get a different angle on that. And we'll shade here. Actually, I guess this should be highlighted, so this gets shaded because it's underneath. Just redo that one. All right, well, my camera quit on me yesterday when I was finishing this project, so I'm going to go ahead and pick it up and just walk our way through this. Um, boy, don't you love technical difficulties. All right, so these letters up here are done the same way that we did these letters down here, with the exception that I added some transparent red iron oxide which is a little bit darker. And you're just gonna do, I'll just go ahead and show you, you'll do exactly the same thing that you did um, with the, you know, the, the other color was called, uh, burnt sienna. Same exact little deal there at the bottom. Get in a nice float, and then you go ahead and you just float right down there at the bottom and walk it up just a teeny bit. And, and now I show you off camera, sorry. So you just float along the bottom, and then walk it up just a little bit. Okay, and then you'll notice that these are stronger color than these. Well, what I did when I got done is um, I took a really rough sand disc and I sanded through, like I sanded through the um, banner base coat and everything. Um, this color is the same as this color, so you're just gonna do that. And then the drop shading, and I'll show you how to do that, is um, soft black. So we'll mix some water. <clears throat> and so you thin it and you use a round, whoops, hi, round brush. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to go on all of the left sides of the letters and underneath. Okay, so just repeat, um, just line right next. And it doesn't have to be right on top of, but if you're doing right on top of, do all of them right on top of. And then down here um, on these letters right here, most of the time we bridge stencils so darn good that I don't, I don't need to um, go back in and um, doctor the bridging. But um, in this case, on these letters, 
I felt that the bridging, because it's small and they're kind of blocky, it started looking a little bit like G.I. Joe stenciling and I didn't like that at all. So I went ahead and connected all of my bridges here. Okay, and then at the end what I did is I took my sanding disc and I went straight on through the letters and that really, let me get it in close. Oops, wrong direction. And so that really just makes them just seem much more part of the, uh, of the background. So I like that. Um, I added marshmallows here with just a blob and it's in the same colors as this. So I base coated and then I shaded with the, the caramel, same as our marshmallows down below. Okay, on our banner, we based it with deep burgundy and then we shaded with soft black, which is where I think my camera gave up the ghost yesterday. Yeah, I actually ran out of memory on it. So, all right, so we're gonna float with our soft black and then you're gonna go just on this side and under. Okay, and then you repeat it on the other side. And actually, it probably should have a little bit of that there, which I didn't do yesterday. And then when I got done, I added my stencils in the same um, bleach sand color. If you think that your stencil, if bleach sand is looking a little obnoxious, um, mine down here, I got really strong with my bleach sand. And so I really kind of wanted to tone them down. I would, I would suggest not doing them really heavy. I didn't, I didn't care for it. Hence me sanding through it. But you can go over the top with just a little bit of the slate gray through the stencil. 